Today we're covering some things to avoid and some general tips and tricks for how to pack lighter for your next trip. It's been a little while since we've done one of these, so I thought it'd be fun to do a refresher course of sorts. I hope you all enjoy it. Without any further ado, let's get into it with the first set of tips all revolving around clothing. First and probably most important, make sure that you're choosing the right fabrics for the clothes that you're packing. You generally want to follow a couple different principles for your clothes. You want to, one, be able to rewear them multiple times without any sort of stench or stains or or smell issues, or two, you want to be able to rewash them really quickly when you're out traveling. For re-wearing clothes without any kind of stink, a lot of wool fabrics will be best for this. You know, merino wool or alpaca wool are two of my favorites. You know, for t-shirts, I really like the woolly t-shirts, but there are also some really good ones from Unbound Merino and Proofs Merino 72 hour line. There are also a handful of merino wool travel pants, which work really well, but also there are a ton of great options for kind of heavier layers with hoodies and things. Just recently started trying out a hoodie from Paca Apparel that I've been really enjoying. Unbound Merino makes a really nice zip up hoodie that's made entirely out of merino wool as well. Uh, this is definitely my favorite way to go and just plan to rewear items, you know, multiple days in a row or multiple days throughout the trip. The alternative route you can go, though, is to focus around more synthetics that are able to be rewashed really easily because they dry really quickly. This ties into my next point or tip, and that is to not be afraid of doing sink laundry while you're out on the road. Doing a quick load of sink laundry is a lot easier and a lot less daunting than it probably seems for the novice traveler. You can usually find running water wherever you're at and some sort of sink or vessel and alternative if the sink is looking really gross or nasty or if that's just really not your thing uh, they do make some wash bags a couple of years ago i found something called the scrubba that worked really well kind of as a sink laundry bag it's really nice too because that can double up as a dirty laundry bag in your pack clothes so you're not getting all of your clean clothes dirty with the stuff that needs to get washed you just kind of dump water in there they even make you know little dehydrated laundry detergent strips uh, that makes bring that along much much easier and you can just do that real quick if you have those synthetics they dry really fast as well uh, it's not nearly as daunting or difficult or annoying as it might seem on the surface if you've never done it before and that is a great way to pack for longer term travel the last general clothing tip i wanted to cover here is to embrace a capsule wardrobe all of these kind of tie into each other in one way or another if you're not familiar the idea of a capsule wardrobe is that every piece of clothing will work with every other piece of clothing that's in your closet or packed in your suitcase. Doing this allows you to move past the idea of, you know, packing three different outfits for a three day trip. You can probably pack, you know, two days worth of clothes, but make three or four or five different outfits out of those limited number of items. That way too, if you change your mind when you're at the location and getting dressed for the day and you don't really wanna wear what you planned or packed for that specific day, you, know, you can kind of pivot and go on the fly with what feels best at the time and you can pack a lot less clothes when you're doing it. Really quick, I want to give a huge thank you and introduce you to the sponsor of this week's video, Airlo. Roaming and data charges from your cell service provider can add up really quickly when you're traveling abroad. Trying to store and manage physical SIM cards can be a real pain, and that's if your phone even supports them anymore. And relying exclusively on public Wi-Fi once you get to your destination is way too big of a gamble when you're out of the country. That's where Airlo comes in. They offer instant and affordable connectivity through eSIMs for more than 200 different countries and regions around the world. I know I'm probably in the minority for our group here, but I don't personally get the chance to travel internationally all that often. After I moved 2,400 miles across the country a few years back, I've spent most of the past few years exploring the western half of the United States. More recently though, I've really had the itch to get back out there and explore the rest of the world again, and worrying about things like cell phone connectivity when traveling can be a bit daunting. No more having to wait in a long line at the airport for a SIM card or trying to find a shop at your destination with one. You have a single app where you can browse through the list of countries, select the location you're headed to, pick out whatever amount of data you think you may need, and have it all stored on your phone and ready to activate as soon as your plane lands. The eSIM technology allows you to still maintain your regular phone number to receive calls and SMS, 
And because you're set up and ready with service from the first minute you arrive, you can always extend the package with more data if you're using a little bit more than you had anticipated. If you find yourself moving around between countries within a single trip, or if you've gone full digital nomad vagabond, you can also choose a global plan that'll cover you for over 100 countries. Pricing is also extremely reasonable and flexible. Most countries have quite a few options for different lengths of time and amounts of data. On top of this, you can use code Josh3 for $3 off your next eSIM purchase. Definitely give it a try on your next trip if you haven't yet, I know I am and truly can't wait to get back out there more again. Scan the QR code on the screen or check the link down below in the description box. Huge thanks again to Airlo for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I've got a couple of hacks that will really save you a bit of headache if you end up with more stuff at the end of your trip and aren't sure how to pack it up to get back home. Two different options that I think both will work really great. You know, if you have a bunch of stuff, just ship it home before you get there. I actually have taken advantage of this a lot going back to Detroit to visit family, especially around Christmas time. I end up trying to bring gifts home and stuff like that. For domestic type of travel, I think this works really well. You know, shipping something back from the post office for, you know, 10 or $20. It's a lot less expensive than paying, you know, 70 or $80 for a check bag that you probably don't need if you're not planning or anticipating for those extra items to be brought home. Alternatively, I haven't personally used this one yet, but I've seen it around and I've actually seen it in the comments before too as a quick way to get around this. You know, buy something from the duty free shop in the airport and use the bag and load it up with your own stuff. Those duty free bags don't count towards your luggage size requirements or luggage amount limits. So even if you have you know, a carry-on bag and a personal item bag, buy something from the duty-free shop and utilize that as kind of a third and extra bag for those overflow type of items. That could be a little bit more trouble than it's worth, but it's definitely better than paying overages if your luggage is too big. Our next tip is to always be tracking your luggage. It's never been easier to do so with modern technology here in 2024, but use something like an AirTag or a Tile Tracker or a Chipolo I just recently heard was a good choice from someone in the comments last week. Uh, throw one of those trackers in your bags, throw one in all of your bags. It's going to save you a lot of potential headache for not very much investment up front. You'll have to let me know in the comments. I have heard that some airlines are cracking down on this. I'm not really sure why. I think they just don't like that we're figuring out what they're doing with our bags, but that'd be a fun discussion down below. And on the note of bags, if you wanna avoid the hassle of lugging around your one bag travel backpack all over some city that you're exploring through the day, or if you wanna avoid looking like a dumb tourist wherever you're going, uh, pack a smaller day bag or a smaller sling bag within your personal item or your carry-on bag or whatever it may be to utilize while you're on your trip. Uh, this is a huge one I didn't do for a very long time, but I've gotten into the rhythm of it and definitely can't go back now. Tons of benefits to doing that and it really doesn't take up much extra space in your bag. I've even done in the past where I've used my you know, tech pouch as my sling bag and then when I get to the hotel, you know, take all of the tech items out and fill up my sort of like everyday carry items in there. So you don't even need to bring an extra bag in in that case, it's just replacing your tech pouch. And lastly, on the luggage packing specific type of tips, don't bring those just in case type of items. A lot of people tend to pack their fears. This is more of a like wilderness backpacking term, but it definitely translates into regular travel. You know, in all of my years of doing this, I've always just kind of gone into it with the mentality of, you know, what if I need this just in case? Is that something I can buy at the destination I'm going to in some sort of emergency scenario? The answer is generally always yes, unless you're going deep into the wilderness. And if you can easily purchase something when you get there, in the case of an emergency for a backup item, you probably don't need to pack it. With all of my years of keeping that in mind, I've never actually had to buy that backup item at the destination. So it saved me from packing all of this extra stuff for you know countless trips at this point. You're not going to miss it. And if you do, you can easily replace it at your destination. A couple of quick tips around tech and toiletries. Uh, first off with tech, you know, invest in smaller and multi-purpose type of items. Uh, modern tech, especially for travel, has gotten so much better, even specifically in the last, you know, two to four years with uh, GAN chargers being so small and tiny, 
with such high wattage options available, batteries have also gotten much better. Utilize all of this new tech to save space and trouble in your bag. Uh, also to utilize multi-purpose type of tech items. A few really good examples that come to mind for that. Uh, ESR makes that Halo kickstand charger. It works as an iPhone charger and it works as a kickstand if you want to use that at the hotel or on the plane to watch TV and movies. Uh, also too, this is more applicable for older iPhone users like me, but it also allows you to skip a lightning cable. Another really good example that we just talked about a bunch last week is the InCharge X cables. Those are kind of multi-port six and one cables that offer micro USB, lightning, and USB-C and USB-A. You know, throwing one of those in there is just a catch-all for that older legacy tech is a really great way to save space and not bring, you know, 20 different cables with you. Moving into the toiletries category, there are kind of two different different ideas here that I think are both valid and good. One and the little bit crazier is just to skip your liquids entirely. You know, packing liquids is very annoying when you're traveling with the, you know, 100 milliliter rule. A really good way to circumnavigate that is to just not bring any with you. Uh, there are a ton of great options for dry versions of really common toiletry items. Uh, toothpaste tabs are something I've been using for years and really love. There's also, you know, really good soap bars now that are actually multi-purpose for your hair and step two. They even make solid face moisturizers now, which is really cool. I picked some up from Lush a while back and tried them out. It's not my favorite compared to my normal day-to-day -day one, but for a trip, it's more than sufficient. And like I mentioned earlier, if you wanna do sink laundry, you can even pack, you know, dry laundry detergent strips there are dry versions for so many of our toiletries. It's a really fun and good way to go if you're trying to pack extremely light. Uh, if that's a little bit too extreme for you or for whatever reason you have to pack a liquid of some kind or another, uh, there are some really good travel specific containers that work really well. Two liquid containers that I really like is the uh, collapsible one from Matador. I do like that one because it packs up down to nothing when it's empty. Not as nice to use when it's full, but definitely much more convenient after you empty it out. Uh, alternatively, I do really like the ones from Gravel as well. Uh, those aren't completely collapsible, but they are soft. So you still get a little bit of structure for the ease of use when they're full, but um, they're a little bit more flexible to be able to cram into smaller areas and things. I really appreciate that clean and simple loadout and aesthetic. I think it's well worth the investment there. A couple of potentially contradictory, broader idea type of tips next. Uh, first thing I wanted to cover on is just not to overdo it with all of this stuff. You know, getting the gear down lighter and simpler and easier, you know, can make travel fun when you're not burdened down with a ton of extra luggage. It really is great and that adds its own sort of benefit to a trip but you can go a little bit too far at times. So don't be afraid to pack a luxury or two with all of this extra space you're creating in your luggage. Uh, for me personally, you know, there are always a handful of things I'll bring that aren't 100% necessary, but just make my trips a lot nicer. You know, first off being coffee gear. Um, if I have a ton of extra space, you know, I'll bring something like the packed coffee kit. That is a full pour over electric kettle. It's pretty big and bulky to fit in my bag, but it's always so nice when I have it when I'm out of town. The only thing worse than crappy Keurig coffee in a hotel room is no coffee at all. Uh, those are two things I really, really hate. So being able to have like a proper pour over setup when I'm on the go is really nice. Um, as a lighter weight alternative, I do really like the AeroPress Go as well. That is extremely small and compact and makes really great coffee. Just bring some of those luxuries with you with all this extra space you're making. Just maximize what is pleasant for you instead of just worrying about getting as light as possible because sometimes you can go too far and it actually ends up being more of a negative for your trip than the initial positive that it was. Our next tip is something I've been wanting to work into a video for a very long time but just haven't found the right topic to squeeze it into. This is perfect. Uh, make sure that you're not avoiding traveling because you don't have the right gear or equipment or clothing or any of the stuff that we talk about around here. I think all of our really great travel clothes and tech and fun gear can really have a pretty big positive impact on your trips if you can afford it but don't think that you need that stuff to be able to go out and travel and enjoy yourself. Uh, when I was younger, I did more traveling than I do right now. I had no money, I had no cool gear. You know, I had my Jansport backpack from high school and I had you know, a handful of cotton t-shirts and I had no money to buy food or any of that when I was out and about. Uh, I had some of the best times of my life traveling with no fun gear, 
no money, uh, just out there, you know, sleeping on people's floors or sleeping in a van with the rest of my bandmates when we were on tour. All of the nice gear and clothing and bags is meant there to support the traveling and support the adventuring and the fun. Uh, it's not a requirement to get out and do so. I know if I didn't get review samples, I wouldn't be able to have half of what I have around here that I've gotten to test over so many years with all of you. I just thought it would be a really good thing to mention for anyone that might be feeling discouraged or like they can't go out and travel and have fun because they don't have a ton of, you know, nice, expensive type of stuff. You don't need it. Get out there anyways and slowly acquire as you're able to. On that note, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this more tips style format. I haven't done it in quite some time. Uh, let me know what you think. If you like it, if you want to see more, if you want me to just shut up and go back to talking gear again, uh, just let me know down in the comments. Let's get a discussion going. Thank you all so much for watching though, and I'll talk to you in the next one.